Welcome to DC today, this Wednesday. It is April the 17th and uh, kind of a mixed day in markets. It actually started out on the day positive um, in the morning and then kind of gave way uh, pretty, pretty soon thereafter. Not a, a ton of news out today, really. Um, and I just think the market um, is still just sort of consolidating here at this point, uh, pricing in some, uh, some higher interest rates. And then really some of the Fed comments from yesterday, Jerome Powell comments about um, you know, rate, rate cuts being maybe a little later in the year than halfway through the year. And so there were some media grab, uh, headlines grabbing attention around, you know, did the Fed take back their pivot um, that they had from October or not? Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't think that's what he meant when he said those things. I think he was just stating the facts, which is that inflation has been uh, moving sideways rather than lower. And so they wanted more proof of it going lower and they need to wait until it until they see that. The positive that he said and that I'll say is that the economy does does see, seem to be hanging in there and earnings that have been coming out seem to be also hanging in there. So it's not, not all bad news at all. Um, but the market closed lower by about 45 points on the Dow. We're basically back to even on the Dow, give or take. We're up about a quarter point. Or something on the year. The S and P's up on the year, still around five percent. But we've just given some back. I mean, Q two is a monster quarter, and so you know, if we're four and a half percent off of the all time highs, so be it. Um, the um, uh, but today we had uh, Fed Beige book. This is uh, a pretty thorough analysis of the, of the economy with all districts reporting. Um, there's twelve of them. Uh, all Fed districts reporting about what they're seeing in their area as far as inflation, as far as um, the economic side of things. And uh, it was generally fairly positive. So we were down more kind of mid morning to early afternoon. And then with the beige book out generally positive, uh, you had some market recovery. And so we ended up closing slightly lower on the day. But um, out of the 12 districts that reported, 10 of them reported a modest uptick in economic activity. That's, that's pretty good. Um, so we'll take that. And most of them um, were basically in line with the prior month as far as uh, price pressures, price increases. So um, generally a, a fairly positive report overall and uh, kind of more of the narrative that I've been mentioning, which is, uh, yeah, rates are kicked out here a little bit, but we're, we're doing, doing fine uh, withstanding. Um, the uh, CBO, which is the Congressional Budget Office today, had uh, their report on tax receipts. So we all just paid our lovely tax bills here on Monday. Um, and uh, they took in a record amount. So 100, this is not, not, not amounts that are already withheld. So if you're getting a W-2 paycheck or something and they're withholding taxes or you're taking a distribution from an IRA and, and, and we're withholding taxes for you, not including those, the withheld amounts, but additional payments that were sent in was a record amount, which was $155 billion. The April, the last record of uh, tax receipts in April was 121 billion in 2022, and that was following the big run up in 21, and then basically the reopening of the world um, and the economy doing doing good things as far as growth goes, as supply chains eased and all those things. So generally, a good number for the uh, Treasury Department to take in that kind of money um, for the year. CBO is projecting a 4.93 trillion dollar. Uh, total tax intake for the government, which would put it right in line with the record amount we had in 2022. Um, so generally, uh, you know, tax collections are not the issue. It's, it's as we all know, it's it's the spending side of the equation, which is why we have such a, a, a budget uh, in, uh, imbalance. And um, this will help. And actually, the uh, estimated amount of uh, new Treasury issuance that the Treasury will have to do to fund the government Will actually start to decline, not not in total terms, but the rate of growth. It'll still grow. Um, the rate of growth will decline, which it hasn't done in two years. So those are generally positive things. Again, though, when you're talking about a, a two two trillion with a T budget deficit, you know these things definitely help. But you know it's it's a pretty pretty big chunk to get over. Um, you know we might get down to the say the one point nines, the one point eights, even as far as a, a deficit for the year. Um, which we would take, of course, but this isn't wartime. We have full employment, tax receipts are record highs. And so it's entitlements. It's, it's where we're at with Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all those things that we know. 
um, interest expense on the debt is also um, higher than it has been. Although, frankly, it isn't all that high considering the number, the amount of debt that we have. Um, the um, there was an I, I put a Q and A in there and asked Brian about how we manage our fixed income portfolios. Um, and particularly, do we use bond ladders or do we believe in bond ladders? This is when you stagger our maturity dates over a period of time. So, so look, if, if someone has um, an upcoming liability payment, got to have you know have to pay off, uh, have to pay for college in this date, or have to uh, pay pay the government a tax bill or something on this date. Um, ta tax ladders, I'm sorry, bond ladders can be just fine. So it's a great tool. It's time tested, been around for ages. Um, but if we're managing fixed income in house for people with goals, we're doing it in a much more dynamic way rather than just setting a, a static amount of maturity um, and getting whatever interest rate the market will give us at that particular time. Um, we want to be able to have different asset classes in there high yield, both munis and corporates. We want to have senior secured loans, floating rate. Uh, securitized credit, you know, uh, government, corporate. So, you know, we're, we're, and we want to be able to manage the credit component based on the economy, how much credit risk we want to take. And we want to be able to manage the duration that we're going to take as well, how much uh, interest rate sensitivity we're willing to take in a, in a certain client account. So there's 12 different, I, I made that number up, but there's a dozen at least different um, asset classes, but also, um, uh, metrics that we're using to manage fixed income portfolios for people. So it's a fairly complicated process, but uh, much more than just a static bond letter, I guess would be my point. And, uh, and then the other part of it is just, it isn't done in a, um, uh, is, the structures can be different too. So, so whether it's individual bonds, it's mutual funds, which we, we can use for certain asset classes, which make a ton of sense, or having a separate account manager with one of our partners manage uh, individual bonds for us. Those are sort of the three different different ways in which we do it. So with that, I will uh, leave it there for the evening. Um, tomorrow, we've got a little more uh, rocking and rolling in the economic calendar, which is nice. Um, there's initial jobless claims. I know there is um, a manufacturing survey, the Philly Fed manufacturing survey will be out, and then there's some existing home sales. So I'll walk through all of that with you on DC today, and we'll do that tomorrow. Well, I hope you have a great evening and reach out with your questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.